Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, I'm Alyssa. And I'm Kayla. And we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Happy Wednesday, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. I don't know if you guys saw, but there's so many people geared up and ready, excited to see our guest today, which is Kimberly Pulley of Pulley's Woolies. And man, we've been having so much fun in the studio with her. But this is also our birthday celebration month, so that makes it extra sweet that she's here. And we've just been having a blast with you all this month celebrating thank you so much for that what have you guys been seeing oh my gosh we're just so grateful for all of the sweet words and sweet thoughts that y'all have been sharing with us in the YouTube comments on Facebook in the Facebook group, Living Felt Friends, and of course, y'all have been emailing us some really <laughs> sweet things too. Yeah. It's so nice, and didn't you get to spin the wheel for somebody? I, <laughs> I did, yeah, it was so fun. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, what, first of all, if you stumbled across this feed, this is our live show. We do this about once a week, as, as much as we can throughout the year. On Wednesdays, we do tutorials. Uh, we have guests like we do today, which is super, super sweet for us. It's interactive, so everything's going on over there in the live chat. I see people saying, Hi, and I don't have the names queued up uh, for you today, but you get a chance to win by commenting on the live show and by commenting on the replay. And I think we're going to spin at the end of the show, we right? Are. Yeah, we're going to spin for some folks. So y'all comment. You're going to have a chance to answer questions. And we have some winners from last week's show, people who commented on the replay, and that's Patricia Vanderpool and Carolyn Zhu. Congratulations, y'all. So you won either a wet felting activity pack or a needle felting fantasy mushrooms pack. Uh, kit. So those are super fun prizes and everybody you have chances to win on the live show, on the replay, and all the rest of the month, as much time as there's left, if you go to our website, which is livingfelt.com, and click on the enter to win up in the top navigation and you can find out all the ways you can get entered to win. And one of those, have you guys seen some of the stories people have been posting, their oh, Living Felt so stories? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Well, they're making our, like, years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, so people have been posting their Living Felt stories, sharing sometimes how they got started needle felting, how they discovered us, maybe how the community has been supportive for them, which for us is just amazing. All of you make that happen. And today is a really special Living Felt BFF story near and dear to my heart, so I get to tell it to you. All the fairies love Kimberly, too, so we're going to have a show with one of our BFFs, and it's going to be fun. Yes. Yes. All right. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all, too. Okay. Thank you. Bye, y'all. So everyone say hi and say where you're from. Who are some of the people we have with us today? We have Christina Parrott from Flor uh, from sorry, from Poland. We yes. have quite a few people from sunny Florida. So nice. Thank you all. I see. I also see folks in Australia, and I see Lori is with us. Judy is with us. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. So today is a really special day. Some of you know that Kim Kimberly Pulley is just uh, one of my personal treasured artists. Uh, she is here, been in the studio filming with us, and I know many of you know her, so if you're excited, throw up some hearts over there in the chat. Please give a great big BFF welcome to my friend and yours, Kimberly Pulley. Yay! Come on, Kimberly. Don't be shy. Yay. Say hi. All right, down there. <laughs> yep. So get go, come on in here. Don't sit down okay. yet. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. So I know y'all want to say hi to Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly has joined us in the studio this week to film a course for our online school, feldingtutorials.com. And I have the extreme fortune of getting to sit across from her and behind the camera <laughs> and watch her create just an amazing portrait. So I'm very excited to she didn't share. She fall asleep. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm very excited to share her with you, more of her art with you, and then we'll tell you, of course, how you can take her class as well. This is the first time ever, and uh, we're so glad that you saved it up for us, because we've been playing this a long time, haven't we? Yes, before the <laughs> pandemic. Pre, This is pre-pandemic planning, for sure. So we're going to sit down. You ready to get started? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll pull you in here and make sure. There we go. So okay. many hearts Talk in again. chat. They're so yeah, excited yeah. for Kimberly. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Every Everyone's excited. And I'll, I'll read some stuff here, too. So y'all have a chance. You'll get an opportunity to ask uh, Kimberly some questions. We've brought more of her artwork. Come on in here, girlfriend. Get close. 
And um, cool, very good, very good. I'm gonna see who some folks are here. Lots of hearts, lots of hearts, lots of excitement for everyone. There's... I have tears in my eyes. You do? <laughs> yeah, I do. This is like a big voyage. And now Kimberly has been here before, um, mm -hmm. taken a class. She was a guest on Wooly Wednesday a that few was. years back and shared some of her art, which is really, really special. Um, and for me, it's super fun because, well, I've always loved your art. <laughs> you since, <have. laughs> since the very first thing I saw and so we're gonna have an opportunity to go through that a little bit and share a little bit more of her story with you so Kimberly why don't you just tell them like how did you even discover felting in the first place my mother died and um, I went to the house for the funeral and I walked into the house and I realized it was a museum for my artwork of your artwork of my artwork yeah so I went home and I just felt like I couldn't paint anymore. So it took a little bit, I'd say a couple of months, and I, but I knew I had to be creative some way. So I started painting t-shirts. That's cool. Just, you, <laughs> sometimes you just need some way, yeah, some yeah, outlet. Just, yeah, an outlet. Mm -hmm. So I came across on the internet Stacy Paulson's work and it said it was needle felted. And I was like, what is needle felting? So I looked it up on the internet, and lo and behold, there was <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so I started doing your yeah. classes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I... Now, what year was that? 2016. Okay. okay. So then I did... Um, I shrunk down a sweater by accident and got a cheap kit from Amazon, I think it was, mm -hmm. and started needle felting mm -hmm. on this shrunken sweater and made them into cut out mittens. I never sewed them up, but I posted it and she gave me a prize. <laughs> <laughs> and I messaged you. I'm pretty you messaged sure. me yes. and I had to do a piece for her of these flowers. Mm -hmm. I told her, um, I said, I'd never seen your work before, mm -hmm. right? And I said, make me anything. And charge me whatever you want. <laughs> and I didn't know what was the charger. But we did it. We, we got the project yes, done. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Kimberly made me something. But what something that's really special is that this visit, she brought me the mittens. Now, I I've been telling the story of these mittens since it happened. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I foraged through our all of our creative pieces mm -hmm. like, uh, and bring out the thingy that you made for me. But today I have the mittens. So do y'all want to see the mittens? If you want to <laughs> see the mittens, then throw up some hearts in the chat. I know you're already excited and um, let's show them off. Okay. One free. Uh, yeah. They're perfect opposites. So check these out y'all. We'll, we'll do an overhead here. Uh, let's put them down so they can see them uh, nice up close and personal. These to me are just so fantastic. They're bright. They're beautiful they're colorful they're painterly and come to find out well you are a painter by training mm -hmm. right yeah and so these mittens were what inspired me to contact her and say hey well, I don't know what you're doing but keep felting and make me something too and I kept felting and yeah. I kept doing Wooly Wooly Wednesdays. <laughs> Wooly, yeah, Wooly Wednesday hadn't even started then. Mm -mm. Wooly Wednesday started like in 2017, I want to say. Um, so tell us a little bit about, um, we. so we have those, and tell us a little bit about your artistic influences as a child. Like what kind of got you into art in the first place? Supposedly I come from, I'm related to Diego Velasquez. My maiden name's Velasquez. And... Um, we have artists all the way back. My grandfather was a jeweler. Uh, my uncle Carlos was a painter. But for me, I think it was all the wild colors that I saw growing up in California and um, also in Mexico. And there's a lot of Mexican influence in California. And I, it yeah. was color. Color mm -hmm. just grabbed me all the time. But I also started painting um, women, whether it's a young girl, you know, all stages of womanhood. Mm -hmm. And I had very, very strong women in my life, my mother and my sister. So, that so was that's your... what I did. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> was, that, was your, that was your starting theme. And in fact, I think we have one of the first women that mm -hmm. you felted. And I wished I would have grabbed that other purse. But So Jordan's popped that up here. So this, tell us a little bit about this purse over here. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to do, incorporate women into my felting 
and I didn't know quite how to do it with the wet felting. And I wouldn't do just needle felting. I had to do the wet felting too. Mm -hmm. That was important to me. Um, so the shrinkage and everything, trying to figure that out. So my first attempts weren't very good. Even though I knew how to draw a portrait and everything, um, I hadn't figured it all out. So that's one of my first purses. And actually, Joanne Stratikos, who was just on Woolly Wednesday, has that one. Mm -hmm. And I have another one. You have yeah. the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when you when you first came out with your purses that we had a conversation. And I'm like, you know, if, if you just made a, a wall hanging, mm -hmm. these would sell as well. Like, what? yeah. They've put, sold I more. Would put it, yeah, put it on a wall mm -hmm. rather than just a purse. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And purses get a lot of wear and tear. They do. Yeah, I've had I have one of mine that has made it like I took it to work every single day, but I can't say that I overstuff it. And right, right. I, I just wear it on my shoulder till I well, get to the car. And... The one you gave me just lives on a shelf so yeah. that people can admire it because to yeah. me I can't carry it. I feel I I need a bag that I can mm -hmm. go go rugged with. Well, let's say I think we have another. I don't know if this this one is one of your early pieces. Was no, this, this another? One's this been is more recent. recent. Well, let's pop this one up so you can kind of see where where she's gone. So tell us a little bit about this piece, Kimberly. This is Shelley Steele's granddaughter named Autumn. Oh. And I fell in love with this picture because she had this flower crown on, and it was actually for her mother's wedding. So she was the flower girl in the mother's wedding. So sweet. And what so a beautiful I baby. did it, and we. She had to have it. <laughs> so of I had course. To send it. <laughs> of course she did. Of course she did. It's so beautiful. And I think we even have a, another one because you, you, so you mentioned women, flowers, mm -hmm. color being really uh, big for you. So tell us a little bit about this piece. Well, this piece, it, uh, Sonia has this one. Sonia Oswald, who was just mm -hmm. here. Who was mm -hmm. just here has mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. Um, this one was, um, I just wanted to have fun with different textures. So I have yarn, I have uh, Nuno, uh, Nuno felting in it. I think I have silk paper in it. That face is just angelic. She's like a little cherub. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And you like to mix in some techniques into your pieces uh, as well. Yeah, uh, recycled fabrics is one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. So I go to thrift shops. In fact, the thrift yeah. ladies know to hide things under the... Do they? <laughs> That's so nice. They kind of know what I'm looking for now over the years, so they, they'll hide stuff. That's so awesome. Uh, let's see, Catherine Carson says, do you find felting similar to watercolor as it is about layering? I was never good at watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I was an oil painter and an acrylic painter. Very nice. Um, but yes, I can see it. As, I think I see it more so in other people's works more than mine. Um, mine tend to, I layer things and um, sometimes I go a little heavy in my portrait work. Um, so I, I really consider it more like oil painting and especially when you finish off an oil painting you use, um, I forget what you call it, but it's basically with linseed oil and you add a little pigment, it's uh, glazing, it's called okay. glazing. Mm -hmm. I think of it more that way, I guess because I was an oil painter. Mm -hmm. But I do see that in other people's works, yes. Claire Long says, what I particularly love in Kimberly's work is the mixing of textiles. It <laughs> just creates magic. That's awesome. I let them do the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about um, tell us about maybe something particularly memorable that you've experienced in your felting journey. The response from the living felt group mm -hmm. um a lot of you guys have bought my work um this love and support but um before the pandemic i was on a roll and i got published three times and i was so, so proud of that yeah <laughs> yeah really fun now i think we brought uh, a couple of the pieces that you had that were published so let's pull one up here and now this is this is just amazing so tell us about this piece uh what you know what's it called where was it on exhibit just give us the backstory this is Emily's nightmare. It's actually um, supposed to be my granddaughter who went and posed for me, but she had bunny ears on at Easter time, and she got scared going into, there's a drive, her grandmother's house has a driveway and then a little woodsy area, and the grandmother had hid 
the eggs in the woodsy area. She didn't want to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept thinking in my head, the lion sleeps tonight. And that's how, that's how this painting was born. So I was like, shh, don't wake up the lion because no, I'm afraid to go get those eggs. <laughs> now tell us about the how that work was published. That was um, Fiber Arts Now. Yes. Excellence in Fibers. Mm -hmm. And that was two years ago, I believe, mm -hmm. three years ago. And um, it was a con where it was juried. Yeah, a juried and online exhibit. <laughs> By Marie. <laughs> well, and not just me now, not just me. And there were lots of works, and there were lots of accepted. Yours mm -hmm. was, yeah, one of one of the works. But that that work went to travel on from from yes. the online exhibit, and, and it went to the Hunterton Museum in New Jersey, which is, if you ever get a chance to go, it's really quaint. It has a big old water mill. It's really nice. Yeah, it's a really, um, a historic building. How did that feel to see your work hanging there? My granddaughter was so pumped because that was her. <laughs> so I was She's very famous. proud. <laughs> so sweet. Uh, so sweet. Now I think we brought another of your pieces, a second piece that was that was published. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that and tell us about this one. This one, uh, Cami has. And Cami, Cami Wogu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my Omo Valley series. And this, Omo Valley. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Ethiopia, Africa. And I had studied African art when I was in college at the University of Florida. And I was interested in mass at the time. I had no idea that people were body painting on the southern side of Africa. So... Um, I don't know how I discovered it really. Um, oh, I know, Pinterest. I saw it on Pinterest. And I kept researching and researching it and then I started getting permission, um, trying to grow as an artist and doing the right thing, getting permission from photographs from these photographers who actually went to the Omo Valley and photographed these people. And so this is one of them that, from one of the photographs and I got that was in Felt Matters. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was two years ago. And Felt Matters you get from the um, International Fibers, mm -hmm. uh, Felt Makers Association, International Felt Makers Association, which is a good time to at least mention International Felt Makers Association or IFA, which we're both members of. And um, it is, if you're really pursuing felt making as a serious hobby or as an artist or artisan, you might check them out. So this week is our, uh, this weekend is the um, annual general meeting and mm -hmm. conference, and that's gonna be online. So you can look up IFA or International Felt Makers Association. And actually Don Edwards was just here a mm -hmm. few weeks ago and she and I recorded a special um, video for this year's theme, which is, um, Let's get technical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we had a lot of fun filming and that's gonna be available to members only. So you might check that out. We're both members and that's that magazine that, that she was published on. And I think we actually have a picture of you working in your home studio. Cause someone mm -hmm. asked, do you have a studio? Uh, let, tell us a little <laughs> bit about this. <laughs> Felt Matters wanted a photograph of me working. So yes, I do work on my patio in the summertime. I wanna be outside in the fresh air and watching the bees and everything over the flowers. Um, so I was creating a painting, um, which I think the next photograph is the pa actual painting. Um, but I, actually, I my st studio is a breakfast nook. I love that. Um, I, I love that because I love that we all feel like, well, I don't have this or I don't have that. You gotta make then, it work. Uh, yeah, and I know people like you who have like a little space, but you're going to felt no matter what. <laughs> and I have a patient husband because I have boxes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Felt in the kitchen, felt on the patio, felt wherever you can. Whenever uh -huh. my friend Don comes, she always felt, she'll felt in her hotel room. Yeah. I would have this time too, but yeah. I had homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which was felting. Oh, by the way. <laughs> it was. So I think we brought that piece you were working on, Kimberly. Tell us. This is amazing. Tell us about it. I was trying to get that one into felt matters but I didn't make the deadline in time so um, but this one's another Omo Valley and I was trying to portray a history um, 
they haven't changed that much in centuries. They're still doing the same thing. Now, they're not dressing up like they used to, like just for uh, planting. So when they planted and then when they um, harvested, they used to do it at those two times and dress up as a celebration. And they would actually wear the fruits and vegetables in their hair. Um, now they do it for money. <laughs> so they do it for the tourists. The tourism. But yeah. you know what? These photographers are getting great pictures. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. Why not? So here's a couple of good questions. So Chris Roy says, do you think I can learn uh, this without a painting background? Oh, yeah. Or would it be helpful to take a painting class? Oh, my gosh, yes. You can take it. Um, you can The way that I taught it, anybody can do it. Um, I'll be honest with you. I broke it down as simple as I could. For the online class. For the online class. Yeah, that class. we're filming here. Mm -hmm. um, all I would say is get a photograph or use the one, the tools that I have for the online class if you want to use the photograph right. that I was using. Right. We'll tell we'll tell them more more about that too. Um, Chris Brookmeyer says the shading in the faces is exquisite. I never thought about the difficulty of anticipating shrinkage when drawing or painting. Yeah, these are these are all well felted <laughs> afterwards. These are real world problems. Um, the biggest thing, uh, the biggest hint I can give you is you can't throw it in the shrinkage. Throwing, right. If you throw it, yeah. um, in fact, I, no, I didn't bring an example. I do have a, a couple pieces where I did throw it and it messes it really messes yeah. it up. Yeah, and we, you know, we teach that in all of our wet felting fundamentals. If you throw something, meaning, or throw it in the dryer, think of throwing in the dryer mm -hmm. is the same thing as oh, throwing gosh, because yes. you're just allowing the material to pounce and hit and pounce and hit. So it's going to do what it wants. You need to control shrinkage. Yeah. So I, it's a lot of opening up, checking. Mm -hmm. It might be that I can't roll this way. Right, right. It might, yeah. I need to roll more that way. Yeah, and the different d elements that you bring into the piece are going to impact mm -hmm. or abrade uh, the ship it, the shrinkage, so you got to compensate. And I had to learn that on my own. There's yeah. nobody that teaches that, but uh, in the well, class. I think, I think you, I think you do learn it. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely taught mm -hmm. because you discover your piece gets wonky. When yeah, you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Kate Latt says, "What's the best way about?" to go about getting photo permission. Oh, so Pinterest always lists who's who's their um, who's the photographer normally if you really look. Or if you go, you know what? No. I went on Instagram. And Instagram I looked up the photographers I was interested in and they have like a DM button also mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. and that's how I ask them. Right, reach out to them directly. And some of them won't even answer you back. I've noticed all the women photographers have answered me back. Really? Mm-hmm. I've gotten, I've reached out to a photographer or someone for other things, uh, male or female, and they've mm -hmm. given permission. So I think you just, you just find the name mm -hmm. of the person. But um, please don't, don't use a photograph because they're... Without with permission. The, yeah, the media, mm -hmm. it all crosses together. They're going to find out. Yes, they will, they will, they will. Now, I think, I think we brought another piece that was from the Omo Valley, which mm -hmm. has been, which was at least for a while. Uh, this one was in Felt Matters. Yes, this was another one that in Felt Matters. So tell us about this piece. This one's by Tori Bond. The photo. The photo is okay. by Tori Bond. Mm -hmm. um, so this piece, I happened upon it and I loved it. And I loved the green and everything. I could see the silk. I could see the textiles I could use. And I got to play with um, the red. On, I actually folded it. It's three-dimensional. It's red um, uh, mulberry paper. And it worked good for the red banana leaf. You know, those little cone things. Mm -hmm. that come, and she folded it up in her hair like that. Oh, I, I see. I just, At the top. I just saw all the elements coming together besides loving the photograph. So I asked, like, I um, DM'd Tori and asked her, and she said, of course, and she, she fell in love with it too. She thought it was great. It's beautiful. And now, so something interesting happened to you today mm -hmm. about the Omo Valley. Share that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Marie, because I wanted to make sure I was on time. At the um, hotel. At the hotel. And I was sitting there with my piece, my homework, for the online class. And the manager came up to me. 
and he wanted to know what I was doing, what was that piece, and what, what, you know, how did I do it, and I told him, and so then I started showing him photographs on the phone, and he saw the Omo Valley, and it was almost like he tested me, and he was like, so who are these people, and I said, they come from Africa, he goes, where? And I said, the Omo Valley. He goes, where's the Omo Valley? <laughs> and I said, Ethiopia. And he goes, I'm from there. Wow. And he goes, here's my business card. If you email me, I'm going next month. I'll take some photos for you. Isn't that amazing? Like, oh. <laughs> small world. It is a small world. And how, like fabric, we're all intertwined. Yeah, so much, so much. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know, I think we even brought a couple of more pieces in the studio today. Can we show uh, sure. a couple of these? Now, um, yeah, okay, let's do this one first. This is this is awesome. We'll, well we have to do yeah. a shout out because I did my granddaughter, so here's my grandson. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Okay, so let's look at this piece here and tell us a little bit about this piece, Kimberly. I thought of it, at, he was sleeping and I love the photograph, so I thought of his guardian angel watching over him and her wings were wrapping him up, protecting him. Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I love this. And this is viscose in here. Mm-hmm. I think it was a pre-felt I made with viscose. Very nice. And then cut it up. I love it. I love it so much. It's gorgeous. Fantastic. And the black background, that's just that's just amazing. Now I know some of y'all are looking for Kimberly. We're gonna pull up her uh, pull up her social right here um, uh, so that you can follow her. Um, she is on Instagram, she's on Facebook, she's on Etsy, but it's different on Instagram than on Etsy. So these aren't typos on the screen. On Instagram, it's Pulleys Woolies with one L, and on Etsy, it's Pulleys Woolies with two L's in both words. Now, this, now I don't know if this was the one, but you've done a series of Buddhas, and um, I don't even remember what was the first thing I got from you, but tell us about this, about this Buddha right here. I took a bunch of um, classes online during the pandemic, a lot. So I learned how to felt in oh, buttons and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was the pleating and then putting stuff under silk, um, more three dimensions. Inclusions. Inclusions. Mm -hmm. And there's um, not the rat of, not the rarefied silk, the other one, the Excel. The gauze, oh, the Excelsior. Mm -hmm. But Margolin, these are Uzbek silk. It's an Uzbek silk, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to do another Buddha, and I'm going to do another one because I learned another technique. Nice. <laughs> to do his headdress, so there'll be so another gorgeous. Buddha coming up. Yes. So I have, my husband and I, um, several of Kimberly's pieces, besides the ones that she's gifted us. <laughs> but your artwork graces my office. It graces my home. I love it so much. We didn't bring any of your Asian themes, which is really big for us. We love right. that. But I do have one of her Buddhas hanging in my office, which I love absolutely. And um, just another gorgeous piece. Well, what she's here to teach is her portrait class. And the big hint is the one behind her is her granddaughter. Um, we'll go this way. Mm -hmm. Is her granddaughter. And this, we'll come in on this a little bit. This is the actual piece that she's teaching in the class. Uh, it's entitled Blossom. Mm -hmm. And this is your granddaughter. This is my granddaughter. I wanted to do take a photograph of something where... Or I, I didn't want to get sued for any photograph I brought in, especially. <laughs> and me neither. <laughs> so I had originally, um, I have a, a flower crown that my father's girlfriend gave me. And I put it on my head. And I was going to do my portrait. And I didn't like any of the portraits. Oh. <laughs> I was like, no. So I asked my granddaughter at Christmas time if she would model for me. And I, I go, I need you to make sure that you understand <laughs> that a lot of people are going to be seeing this and it's going to be on the internet. And all she said was, I'm going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like seven right now, right? She's like seven. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, so this is this is the piece that she's teaching in the class and people wanted to see it. It's, her pieces are thin. This is a very thin piece. I don't know how much it weighs, but right now we have it on like a, a wool mat. Um, so they're thin pieces. They're designed to be framed, put they behind are. a mat. All of the pieces that we have of hers are matted and behind museum glass to you know made to last forever and ever and ever um so oh kevin asked how would you display a piece like this 
frame it, mat it and frame it. Like mm-hmm. have it professionally framed. Like it's going to be worth it. Yes. Right? Yeah. I did see a different way um, that was very attractive though. Um, one of the, the people bought two, two of my pieces. You know those old wooden um, hangers that um, you hang your pants on? Mm-hmm. She had that, but it didn't have the hanger hook. They were more long. Oh, yes. I've seen, like, even, I, I've seen these now. They're like a little wooden display Yeah, and she thing. put yeah. it on her wall. Like, she put one here and she uh-huh. put one here. And it looked really nice. And mm-hmm. I don't think it'll stretch it or anything. I think it'll... Well, your pieces are pretty lightweight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think they would stretch out. Yeah. Yeah. So I did see that hanger method, and I thought that was pretty cool. Mm. Um, Terry says, where do you start uh, on a project? Do you start on the face? I start on the wet felting. She um, wet felts, yeah, she creates a background mm-hmm. and builds up the picture from that. So yeah. basically I do a thumbnail sketch when I first have an idea. Then I'll do a sketch of it um, to know where to lay everything. I take lots of notes. And then I now my pieces are getting so complicated that I have to do homework first before I can even start the laying out of the the base layer. Um, But when I do the face, there's going to be a white oval, which you'll see in the classroom. And um, I work like a painter. I work all over with the same color and just keep layering and layering and layering. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a really special class. So this is, I've I've been thrilled to sit across from you and and watch you create this this picture. And people have asked, how long does it take? And I I want to tell you that she did this in two days. Two Mm -hmm. days uh, she did this here in the studio. And um, it's just been phenomenal to watch. And the only thing you did back at the hotel room was flatten some of the layers mm-hmm. that we did. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't let her take any wool no, back, to, back, to the, <laughs> back to the hotel. Because what I've decided with this class is, unlike a lot of the classes where there's just a whole bunch of repetition, um, is it's pretty much going to be delivered in almost real time. So that you're there with every fluff of fiber and color mm-hmm. and dimension that she lays on the piece even if she changes it later, right. even if she get, you know gets back to it later, because it's this constant process it is. of putting stuff down, stepping back, evaluating, stepping mm-hmm. back, evaluating, and it's been so fun, so fun to watch. Um, let's see. Uh, Day Sheev says, the eyes in your work are so beautiful. So often eyes can go creepy but <laughs> they are wonderful oh, thank you someone else said kimberly's work is hauntingly beautiful Aww. which uh, <laughs> some of like emily's nightmares yeah, hauntingly, yeah, yeah. is hauntingly beautiful i wouldn't use that word with many but i i get it um let's see claire long i cannot literally cannot draw or paint could i learn to do a kimberly portrait in wool could i apply to make buy it to making a horse portrait I don't know how to do a horse portrait. <laughs> um, I think the steps... Uh, the steps would be pretty much the same. Um, but as far as doing something in this class, I broke it down so easy. Mm-hmm. You'll do it. Yeah. And so what we want to suggest, so if you're interested in taking this class, yeah, I know people are probably already asking... The, the class is going to be, it's probably 60 to 90 days out at this point. We've, we, have, uh, we have lots of classes in the pipeline for year, so for the year. So put this one as coming up this year. Put it on your bucket list. If you're not a member of the school, it's feltingtutorials.com. Go register. It's free. We have some free classes you can take so that you can see whether you like learning in this medium, you adapt to that format which is streaming you can stream it on your phone your tablet your mm-hmm. computer have you taken some classes in this yes school i have too? yeah i have i do it <laughs> yeah so you can take classes and so everything will be online streaming for this class kimberly is going to give you you can do this so this is what we're saying like look don't do your own granddaughter or your husband maybe first if you're timid do do blossom. Do do this picture mm-hmm. right here. We're gonna give you the color image. You're gonna get um, guideline drawings that you can use. She's gonna show you exactly how to approach the face in a really easy way uh, that'll get you there. And um, we will 
there I, and what else do I want to say about this just that it's going to go step by step by step so it's wet felting in the background it's needle felting with a lot of detail into place so if you haven't wet felted yet and you want to get towards this then take the free wet felting class we have lots of free wet felting on YouTube also learn mm -hmm. to, to make a wet felt and if you do um, then you might start looking at the picture that you want to do whether you want to do blossom or something else for this portrait, there's not going to be a straight up kit. And I mm -hmm. will tell you it's because Kimberly uses so many colors that we're gonna to have to give you a shopping <laughs> list and a, an approximate amount. But I think they can get away with some little amounts oh, you of, can. Like, of the MC1. It's just that she likes to use a ton of colors. Well, I have every color. <laughs> she has every color. I have every color. Yeah, but we're gonna give you a supply list and you, she also names all the colors or close to it. Mm -hmm. She close to names it. And then She's I sorry. also show you if you don't have a color, how to make, make a your color. own. <laughs> mm -hmm. How to make a color. So in the class, you'll get all of the guides. You'll get to use the same image, uh, to work from the same image and guidelines. She'll show you how to put it together, and we'll list all of the fibers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then if you're experienced wet felter, I did show two techniques in the wet felting that um, will be new to you that you might want to incorporate. Maybe you do. In yeah. your own work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some fun things that add, that add texture. Okay, what are we getting here? Oh, some people are asking like, um, oh, Kevin Noble says, any advice on feminine faces? Mine turn out more masculine every time. I more need rounded, um, softer, light, softer. Just think softer, softer colors, no hard lines. Mm -hmm. uh, men tend to be more angular, um, more contrast. Cool. Alice Shoup says, this class is going to be a great class. So much fun. Um, a couple of people have asked, do you do any top stitching? So Tammy no. Lehman, do you do any top stitching or embroidery thread or anything like that? Did you notice that? the mittens weren't sewn? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost I a didn't mitten. Know. <laughs> not quite a mitten. It's not, <laughs> it's not quite a mitten. Uh, so a couple of people have asked, do you like wet felting or needle felting better? Both. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Both. Both. Yeah. Wet felting is just, you know how Marie was teaching us how to do the art, um, the background, um, the art felt. Artful felt. Artful yeah. felt fabric. That's kind of what my backgrounds are. Yeah. I just throw everything together. Yeah, make up, make up a background. Mm -hmm. um, Helen Russell says, could you substitute the likeness for someone you know? I don't know that, I don't understand the question. Uh, Sometimes I do try to do a portrait, and sometimes I let the portrait be itself and not fight it. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, um, with my granddaughter, the first one I did did not look like her. This one does. Um, and I knew that by the response of the mother. The mother <laughs> said, that's my baby. <laughs> so I knew I, I kind of hit it. Um, but yes, sometimes I'll do a portrait and magic's happening and I just let it go. That's nice. And then if I really want to do the portrait where it looks like, the, and then I'll come back and do another one. Nice. So this this has been a big bucket list for you and for me oh, to, yeah. have, to have you here. But what's <laughs> what's next for Kimberly? What are you going to do next? I'm still trying to get to Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> Gladys Paula's class. I cannot get in her classes. <laughs> you will. Up. You will. So what are you going to do in the meantime? What's your next project? My next project is the Black Mermaid. Oh, nice. And she's on the drawing board. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And another Buddha I had planned up. And I have another geisha, actually, too. Nice. Which we have some of those Which in our house. Which is based off of your yeah. fortune cookie project. <laughs> is it? How fun. That was really fun. I can't wait to see this. People are excited about your class. Um, Joan Kilalea says, such a master of using all these different textured fabrics. I can't wait to take your class. I can't draw, but I can felt. Very nice. It's going to be fun, y'all. And listen, if, please follow Kimberly online. If you're interested in her works, she does sell her works. Sometimes they go kind of quickly. I don't know if you have an album or something of works available. That might be helpful. Are they on Etsy? Right now they're on Etsy. Okay, they're on Etsy. So check her out on Etsy. Also, sometimes she'll post to work on Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. so you can DM her about them. That's usually how I've bought my pieces, is through the DM. Most Just people like, have, Because yeah. you want to, if you see it, you want to snag it. 
I'll just tell you that because yeah, and you'll get a cheaper it. price because um, I'm not paying all the fees. Yeah, that, there Etsy. you go. So she'll do you a deal if she, if you get mm -hmm. it before it's on Etsy or, or before it shows up. So it's Kimberly Pulley, Pulley's Woolies. Her class is called Blossom. It is wet felting and needle felting. Her gorgeous granddaughter, which have been. Um, which have been, she's been commented on as being so lovely and people Aww. loving your work. I've loved watching it. I'm feeling a little bit braver because I want to try this process too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if I can, if I can. And um, I can't wait to see what you all make in the class too. So sign mm -hmm. up in the school, follow Kimberly, follow us. If you get on our uh, email list, which is at Living Felt or in the school, you will get notified when the class is available. We have some awesome classes coming up this year. Have you seen some of the classes? Mm -hmm. So uh, June, Yamaguchi from Japan came and filled her I dolls. I saw them live. To, oh, they're great. Amazing, right? Don <laughs> Edwards was here. We filmed a woodsy vessel. Sonia Oswalt was here. We mm -hmm. filmed the macaws. Kimberly's here. More guests to come this year. So get over to the school. Register. It's free. Because whenever we come out with a new class, there's always a special deal. And you're going to want to get it on the deal. So I hear the fairies are just fluttering out there trying to get back in. Do you want to give away some prizes with us? Sure. Okay, so listen, y'all. We've been drawing prizes all week. Week, uh, your the fairies have been writing down your names as we have been in the live show. The prize wheel, they're like giving us the hook. The prize wheel is coming in the door right now. Uh, let's see if we can get our chairs out of the way without knocking stuff over. Um, it's a fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll pause right there. Um, okay, very good. So they're coming back in with prizes, and so here's the deal it's our birthday month. We love giving away prizes. We gave away prizes every Wooly Wednesday, absolutely. And we've been drawing prize names every day um, and posting them online. Thank you all so much. So these are people who commented on the show. Thank you so much. So the fairies have been writing down names. We're going to let Kimberly draw a name. Two names? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna draw two names right now from people on the live show. And we're going to spin the wheel. For them, you hold it. Oh, ah, you hold it. Okay, so first, let's tell them who you have. Oh, I know who I have. That's fun. I have Melanie Smith. No, Hi, Melanie. Melanie. Right there, right I there. I know Melanie. Okay, <laughs> Melanie Smith. Okay, so Kimberly is going to spin the wheel right now for Melanie. Give it a real spin. Oh, come on. It's got to go all the uh, way around. There you go. <laughs> oh, she wants a dabble box. That's awesome. That is so fun. That's a really fun prize. And I have Noelle Russo. I know her too. Yeah. <laughs> she looks not all that far. You want to give her a spin too? Give it a big spin. She really fun. Yay. Yay. And she wins a purple bear. All right. That's our first kid ever. Congratulations, y'all. Thank you so much for playing with us. Uh, leave your comments down below after the live chat is over. Let us know your favorite takeaway or maybe the favorite work of art that Kimberly shared or let us know that you're going to take her class. Everybody who comments after the live show also wins a chance to win a prize. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Say goodbye to Kimberly. Bye. Bye, Kimberly.